in many conditions. But today, under obstructive neuropathy, we are talking about the prostate. So we are focusing on the prostate because we'd like to know what happened at the operating table when we are doing prostatectomy. Pre-operative preparation, during operation, and post-operative. How do you get involved in the care of a patient we are going to do prostatectomy? So when you look at obstruction, you know, obstruction neuropathy, is as the result of obstruction of the urinary tract. Now we are looking at the kidney calluses up to urethra. The site of obstruction can be upper, which will cause urinolateral obstruction of the kidney. It can be lower cause, which will cause bilateral obstruction of the kidney. And the type of obstruction can be mechanical or functional. But for today, we are looking at the mechanical obstruction because we are dealing with the prostate. Now, when there's the chronic obstruction, be it unilateral or bilateral, what will be the consequences of not taking the patient for operation or for treatment? like hormonal manipulation. What are the consequences? The obstructed kidney or both kidneys will be filling with urine, water. That's why there's that first term, hydronephrosis. Then there's also polycythemia because from the obstructed kidney. This is secondary to increase the production of erythropoietin. Underline that way, it is produced by the kidneys and from by the obstructed kidney or kidneys, if the both of them are obstructed. Erythropoietin will increase the production of red blood cells. That's what leads to polycythemia. Further, renal di tissue destruction will reduce the production of erythropoietin. And that will lead to anemia. So patients with chronic prostate enlargement may come to you with polycythemia if erythropoietin is still being reduced, uh, produced. If the destruction is severe, and erythropoietin is not being produced, the patient may present to hospital with anemia. If the patient is with you and you suspect prostate enlargement, you can say, okay, go and pass urine. Immediately comes back to the ward, you catheterize him. The urine that will come out that's residual urine because it hasn't emptied the bladder completely. So this is one of the tests you can do, we can do to confirm that yes, there's obstruction. Urinary tract infection, especially in the males, it shouldn't be so often because the urethra is long enough so urinary tract infection in an elderly man suspects prostate enlargement. And if the kidneys are not emptying normally, stones can form in the kidney or in the bladder because there's obstruction by the prostate. So renal calculi. Uremia, if there's structural damage especially by, by bilateral renal obstruction, like in the prostate, because both kidneys will be obstructed and will get destroyed 
if the patient does not present for medical help, uremia is one thing which can develop and can present at the time of presenting to the hospital. So how does the patient present clinical presentation? Difficulties in passing urine. The patient, a male patient, elderly patient, 50 years and above, if he says that difficulties in passing urine, one of the things you should have in mind is the prostate enlargement. Recurrent urinary tract infection. Don't just be treating with antibiotics. It's better to investigate the patient. There may be abdominal distension. Suprapubic distension may be the bladder. The bladder is not empty. Now, in the males, prostate enlargement presents with the prostatism. Now, I want you, please, the class rep, write five, five items which I'm going to write. Your lecturer is going to write too. What is the prostatism? Underline that one. Prostatism, number one question we ask the patient. How often do you pass urine during the night and during the daytime? It will be increased. The frequency will be increased more at night than in daytime. More at night than in daytime. That's prostatism. Then you say, when you feel like passing urine, how do you go to the toilet? Do you have to rush? Because you feel that if you delay, urine will come out. That is called urgency, number two. Number three question, when the male person with prostate enlargement, when he reaches the toilet, does he start passing urine immediately or he has to wait for it to start flowing out? Prostatism will show that the patients do wait. They hesitate hesitation there's a hesitancy that's number three number four patient with prostate enlargement will see that the urine flowing out is of poor force poor pressure he can't go very far he has to be near the urinal near the toilet because it comes weakly weak flow Poor, we call it poor stream. And line number four is the poor stream. The last item, number five, is at the end of passing urine. Urine comes out in drops. He has it to wait because he may wet his trousers. That's prostatism. Five items which I've discussed with you. That's about prosthetic enlargement. Now, in elderly people, differentials. Prostatism, we are finished. If there's a young man who has difficulties in passing urine, it may be urethral stricture, following trauma to the urethra, or gonococcal infection, urethral stricture. But in this case, the young man, when he goes to pass urine, he learns to strain to empty. So straining is forcing through the narrow passage due to urethral stricture. This can occur in both elderly and young, male or female, urethral stricture can occur. When there's a urinary stone, in the bladder, the patient will start passing urine, but in the middle of the stream, the urine blocks because the stone has come to the trigon and it blocks the urethra and it can't pass urine. With time, the patient learns to change position. 
These are the patients who tell you, when it broke, I do lie down in the toilet. Lying down means the stone must leave the urethra, go to the dome, and is able now to pass urine. So if you are doing a good history, it may differentiate prostatism, urethral stricture, and the bladder stone. That's why I've put them together. Listening to the patient can help you make a diagnosis. But for today's topic, prostate is in the elderly people above 50 years of age, in most cases. So how do we examine blood pressure? Blood pressure tends to be high. Why? Because obstructed kidney produces renin and it triggers renin and your tensing system and the blood pressure will go up. Remember that point, obstructed kidney will release renin and the renin will work on angiotensin one to change it to the angiotensin two and the angiotensin increases the blood pressure. If you remember that, if you suspected prostate enlargement, one of the likely findings you may find is increasing blood pressure. Anemia, we have already talked about there. That if erythropoietin tissue, erythropoietin producing tissue in the kidney is destroyed, like most of our patients do come late, they'll come with anemia. Abdominal mass, you may palpate the bladder, suprapubic, or renal angles, lumbar regions, you may palpate kidney on each side because they are obstructed, bladder and the kidney is made large. So on inspection, you may find there's the distension in the lower abdomen. On the palpation, there's a mass palpable. On the percussion, there's a dullness over the mass because it's filling with fluid. Digital rectal examination and the digital vaginal examination in women. Forget about digital vaginal examination because the prostate we are focusing on does not involve women. Concentrate now on a digital rectal examination. Very important. If you put your finger in the rectum, a gloved, well lubricated finger, lateral position of the patient, you explain it to the patient, you do rectal examination, the prostate will be enlarged. How do you tell with the finger on the prostate? These are the points that you need to remember. Pro enlarge the prostate, you will not be able to fill the top of it. The apex of the prostate will not be palpable. You know it's enlarged. And you move over the prostate. If it's benign, it will be smooth. If it's a benign, mucosa moves freely on the prostate. If it's a benign, median groove is palpable. If it's a benign, there's no nodule palpable. And if it's benign, it's as firm as the tip of your nose. Those are the features. What about the malignant one? Before you remove your finger on the rectum, you say, is there any sign that is malignant? Enlargement will be there in both benign and malignant. But the consistency, the prostate will feel as hard as the forehead. As hard as the forehead. Mucosa will not be moving freely, it's fixed to the prostate. The median groove is not palpable in the malignant prostate, cancer prostate. And the nodules will be palpable. 
So you have seen you balance, is it benign, is it malignant? That's how we diagnose using a digital rectal examination. Treatment, the treat the cause, prostatectomy. I want to dwell on this because this is the topic of the day. Prostatectomy. There are four types you can read in the books, but the main ones are three. When you have made a diagnosis from history, physical examination, investigations you have done, you have confirmed is the benign prostate, you can take, take for prostatectomy. Very large prostate we go through the bladder. We call it the underlying transvesical prostatectomy. You prepare the patient. So if you are a ward sister in charge, you prepare the patient. What will you check as the sister in charge of the ward? The patient is already catheterized. You are monitoring urinary output before operation. Blood urea electrolytes and created in clearance. You will have done in the ward. You want to see how the kidneys are performing. You might have done ultrasound, put it there. You might have done intravenous urogram. You will compare right kidney and the left kidney, how they are working before you take the patient for operation. You will have done urine culture and the sensitivity so that post-operatively or intraoperatively, you can start antibiotics to avoid the post-operative infection. You will have done grouping and cross-matching. Now, if you are sister in charge, you are working in the team, but if you are in charge of the ward, before your patient is taken out of the ward, you say, do you have blood for him? The minimum is two units of blood, but the surgeon who is going to do prostatectomy will guide you how many units you should have ready to have adequate number of normal cell line, dextrose cell line for IV drip, but normal cell line is for irrigation. So if the patient is leaving your ward, you know the patient will come back to your ward, make sure in the stores you have enough normal cell line. You may need as many as 10 or 15 per day. Because it will depend on the blood stain of your irrigation. I'm coming to that. I hope we are listening. Adequate normal cell line, because you will need to wash the bladder after prostatectomy. You can't run out of normal cell line. Then if you do, you will develop clot retention. Bloody clot will form. They will have to take back the patient to theater to go and open again to remove blood clot. That is very bad. It means you are not you are not ready. Make sure your ward has the three-way catheters. If you don't have three-way catheter, you keep two two-way catheters. In the case, and make sure theater, as you take the patient, you ask, theater nurse, you are going to scrub for this patient. Do you have a three-way catheter? Or do you have a double two-way catheter? We shall reach to that point. Why we should do that? IV drip should be running from ward. Not that they struggle there in theater. No, you have enough time in the world. You have shaved the suprapubic area. In the case they are going to do, 
transvesical prostatectomy. Shaved and clean. Urine is clear. Urine catch and sensitivity report, you have it on file. Send with blood, grouping and cross matching was done. You send with blood. Uh, results of full blood count, urea electrolytes. Be meticulous in your world. Have a checklist. Patient is going to theater. Now, the theater, if you are going to specialize in the theater, you'll be the one receiving from the world system. You will receive the patient in the theater. And you have a checklist. What is the blood pressure? Huh? What is the, is the urine clear? You are checking each other. And then in the theater, operating theater, you go with the file and you mark the file. Don't take a wrong patient to theater. Please make sure you know this Mr. Chileche is 60 years old, is from baby so and so. Don't talk, take a wrong patient. People have made mistakes in the past. Apex, be meticulous. Please, be meticulous. You are dealing with God's people. In the theater, they will put on the operating table. They will check everything. They have a checklist. They will really know how many swabs they will expose, how many needles they will have. They clean. They know where to put the cleaning swabs and things like that. Then they drape the patient and they open the abdomen. It has to be extra peritoneal. Hear me, you are not going to open the peritoneum. Once you open, reach the peritoneum, you sweep the peritoneum out, up, 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 and expose the bladder extra peritoneum. And we put the stay switch out. Between the stage sutures, we open the bladder and we suck out the fluid. Once we are in the bladder, these are things that we do. Check inside the bladder. Where is the catheter? Because we already have the catheter and the balloon. Is there any diverticulum? Is there any bladder stone? How is the state of the bladder? Is it inflamed? You take note of that. Then when everything is clear, you have emptied the bladder. We use index finger. The one who is going to enucleate the process. We'll put a finger in the urethra and you start breaking the mucosa and sweeping the finger on each side of the process. If it's benign, you have a plane, very nice plane. The finger will go round until the prosthetic enlarged portion is removed into the bladder. Take it out and you put in the three-way catheter. Inflate the balloon after about 30 minutes. The balloon should sit where you removed the prostate. If it's a three-way, very good. You need a single urethral catheter, which are three ways. The one way is for the balloon. You distend the balloon, put it in the prostate bed where you remove the prostate. The other way is to allow saline to be coming in. The other channel is to allow the Cell need to be draining outside. That's why we say three way urethral catheter. But in the event that the prostate uh, operation is being done without a three way catheter, you use the two two way catheters one in the urethra, which will fill the balloon put in the prostate bed, the other one. You put it in the bladder supra pubicare, where you open. So that's the one you use for pushing in the cell line. The one with a balloon going down is the one which should be draining the cell line for wash out. 
But please, when you become sister in charge of the world, or a nurse in the world, try to persuade your bosses to have three-way catheter. It's more convenient to the patient. What should be doing, or he will be dealing with one catheter. And as you keep the irrigation running, you close the bladder. We have the first run, take all the wall, the whole wall bladder from deep down up. You close with normal, I mean with the chromic cardigan. You close number one or number two, strong one. And then you follow it up by seromuscular suturing. The first one was the continuous to stop the bleeding. The top one, seromuscular, can be interrupted if you want to. The surgeon will decide. If you be the one who's scrubbing, observe what the surgeon is doing. How many swabs have we used? How many other forceps have you done? Abdominal parts. I need to be given to you. Don't allow your surgeon to close before the count is complete. You are the one in charge of the operating table. If any member in the operating team, the mask is not properly worn, you are the one to say, doctor, please put on the mask operate. We are doing an operation. We want a sterile environment. Don't fear to contribute to the team. We always have a sister in charge of the theater and she has to be responsible. That's how powerful you are. Doctor, your, your glove is torn. Can you wait? Wait. And everybody will wait and you ask your runner to bring in new sterile glove because the other one will be torn. Where, then you will say, now you can continue. That's how you, that's why we train you to be the nurse trained theater nurse. A theater nurse is well trained. These are opportunities for you, the team. As we go along, you will decide which field of training you will get. Your theater should be sterile, everything in place. Don't allow just walking around in the theater. No, you should stop because you don't want infections to come from your theater. Then after you are irrigating, you, are irrigating, you have closed the bladder, you close the abdomen, and you are going to take the patient back to the ward. There will be a recovery room where you will take the patient to. In the recovery room, the nurse from the ward will have come, or there's a recovery room nurse. You give each other, you report how is the patient, blood pressure, pulse rate. Is the patient breathing spontaneously? How much was the blood loss? You will be discussing. Looking at the vital signs. From there, if everything is okay, patient is waking up well, you talk to him, he's responding, you know? You tell him, lift your arm, he's lifting, bring out the tongue, he's, do, he's obeying instruction. Mr. Chiresha, do you know where you are? Yes, I know. I'm in the hospital. Okay, which part of the hospital? No, I've been brought to theater. What is the time now, Mr. Chiresh? What do you think the time can be? You are checking at the personal orientation, place orientation, and the time orientation. Verbal, you give five, you know. And the Mr. Chiresh is opening eyes spontaneously, so give him four. So six plus four plus five is 15 out of 15. You enter, I will release my patient in the recovery room at 15 out of 15. 
you have handed over to the world team. This is how you take care of prostate operation. Now, let me tell you the type, the other types of prostatectomy. This was the TB transvesical prostatectomy. Now, there's another type, transurethral. Transurethral, you don't open the abdomen. You go through the urethra and you cut the prostate, the lateral lobe, the middle lobe. You look into inside and you cut the prostate using a cutting electrical loop, coagulating, cutting, and coagulating. You are making a hole big enough so that after the catheter has been removed, patient will be able to pass urine. Advantage is that there's less bleeding. You have an open abdomen, it's limited, it's internal endoscopic operation. There you will be seeing as a scrub nurse, you'll be seeing what is happening. And at the end, they will again put a three-way catheter. There's no much bleeding in this type of operation. Transurethral resection of prostate. You have to select very big ones, you will struggle. Smaller ones, they are easier to do transurethral resection of the prostate. The surgeon will decide. The other one, you open the abdomen, you don't open the bladder, you push the peritoneum, the bladder up, you go little pubic below the pubis, that's where the prostate capsule is. You put the stay sutures, open, open the capsule, and directly on the prostate, you remove it. It is said it's easier to control hemorrhage. Transcapsular, TC, transcapsular prostatectomy. Other books write retropubic prostatectomy. It means the same thing. That is number three. But in terms of bladder washing, catheter is as we have discussed above. The fourth one, I'm merely mentioning it because in the case you read in the books, it is called transperineal prostatectomy. You just need to remember nobody is doing that anymore. But there was one American surgeon, 1905. He struggled to try popularize transperineal prostatectomy. What he argued is that, why do we have to go through the abdomen? Why? Through, no, we can open it directly onto the prostate from the perineum. And he did operate himself. But because of post-operative infections, nobody followed his advice of transperineal prostatectomy. I've just mentioned it in the case you read a book uh, where they are mentioning and say, oh, but we did, this was not mentioned. But don't worry about this one. Nobody is practicing it because it proves that it is very infectious, very easily infected urinary tract system. So remember prostatectomy, transvesical, transurethral, and transcapsular. These are the three. Now, if the prostate is benign, that's what we have been talking about. Prostate, benign. If it's malignant, don't attempt to do prostatectomy. 
there are better ways of it. So how do you know it's benign or malignant? You do PSA. You will hear the test called prostate-specific antigen. And the digital rectal examination, which we have discussed above, will guide you. This is the malignant prostate. It's as hard as the forehead, does not use, things like that. Yeah, I'm concentrating on the prostate today. I haven't talked about the urethroplasty or endoscopic urethrotomy, no? It's a repetition. Okay, here it is. Investigation, diagnostic, and general. This you will see in the world. Treatment, we have already discussed prostatectomy. TB, transurethral resection of prostate. CCP, meaning transcapsular prostatectomy or retropubic, and the transperennial put in brackets so that you don't take it seriously. Post operative care maintain and monitor the irrigation, monitor vital signs. Of course, during operation, even before operation, you are monitoring vital signs. Monitor input output chart that irrigation of the line. Give it crystalloids and colloids when necessary. If the patient bled a lot during operation, that blood you did could be grouping and cross matching. You will give the patient. Give the blood when necessary. Drugs, antibiotics, analgesics are given. What about prostate cancer? This was the revision test, but here, CA prostate. Tisha tells me which to finish even with the CA prostate. So the clinical presentation, can it be urinary detention? Can it be metastatic lesions that can it present? Anemia that can it present? Clinical examination, the general, you look for anemia, for metastasis, digital rectal examination, we have already discussed how to tell which one is benign and which one is malignant. CA prostate diagnostic investigation. Here you even include chest x-ray. In the case, there were metastasis. General is the urea electrolyte creatinine, full blood count, you know how urea electrolyte, full blood count, I must, liver function test in the case there are metastasis to the liver, those four under general. Treatment, some small enlargements, you can do transurethral resection of prostate to open the way, especially those who come to you with retention of urine. When you have opened the bladder, and you find it's a malignant one, it's hard. What the surgeon does to do posterior weight dissection of the prostate, just to open the way and put a catheter in. But the mainstay of prostate management, malignant prostate, is the hormonal manipulation. And I want you to listen carefully what is hormonal manipulation? There we are, hormonal manipulation. You can do bilateral total chidectomy subcapsular. Why do we do ochidectomy? Now a patient who's 80 or 90 years of age, does he still need the testing? Yes, a man can have children even at the age of 90 or 100 years. But the androgens, the androgens from the testes, they are the fertilizer of malignant prostate. If you, if you remove the testes, you will have cut 90% of androgens. And the tumor will shrink it has no fertilizer, cut by 90% when you remove the test. 
So it's very advisable. We have to persuade the patient to look at the advantages of removing the testing because that will keep him healthy. But those who say, no, I can't remove this, no, I married a young wife, what? You know, the difficulties, you will be meeting them in the world. Then you give them option of medical or chidectomy. There are medicines which you can use to suppress. In the past, we used to use to be strong, anti-androgen, but you are giving a man, give him, pump him with a female hormone. Trubistro is estrogen containing hormone. Now the man, the body will realize that no, we are no longer dependent on androgen. We are getting female hormone. The tumor temporarily will shrink and the patient can improve. But it's temporarily. Later on, the body starts realizing that no, this is just a female hormone. By then, the man is growing breast because it's a female hormone which you have given. The anti androgen, like drugs like frutamide, this one is a medical okidectomy. It is nice. I said okidectomy will take away 90% of androgen. The remaining 10% will be coming from androgen, you know, adrenal gland, mainly. So you give the fruit, frutamide to suppress the remaining 10%. But those who have refused operation, frutamide will try to win the patient, reduce the aggression of cancer prostate, but it's not as good as the bilateral okidectomy. Bicalutamide is anti-androgenic medicine. You'll be hearing about this. Those who refuse operation, bilateral okidectomy, we can give them this option by calutamide, anti-androgenic medicine. Then there's this other one. I, I, I want you to remember this one. Cyproteron to suppress hypothalamus pituitary axis. Now this is quite scientific. The you know the hypothalamus does stimulate the pituitary to release the androgen by the testes. Stimulation for testosterone production from the hypothalamus pituitary, from pituitary to the testes to produce testosterone. So this one, cyproteron, suppresses that axis right in the brain which is very good. Luteinizing hormone releasing, uh, releasing hormone from the pituitary is suppressed. So, I mean, from the hypothalamus to the pituitary suppressed, and the pituitary does not stimulate production of testosterone at the testicular level. So that's what happened with this medicine. It's quite scientific. But even in these, they are not as good as the bilateral okidectomy. They can't suppress testosterone production better than okidectomy. Other treatments include radiotherapy. These days you can send to cancer disease hospital and they can irradiate locally or metastatic disease in the metastatic disease, there's this radioactive 89, radioactive isotope 89. Strontinum. Strontinum is radioactive 85. 
it can help to suppress the metastatic disease. Chemotherapy, again, for metastatic disease. Dose textile is used, but you see all these are temporary. Like the medical, dose textile to work for three months. Patient gets relief for three months. Of course, to die, to die today or die after three months, you can still use this medicine to prolong the life. But it's not as effective as the bilateral or chidectomy in terms of the impact. So, but I've mentioned all this so that when you are reading your books, you can remember what can be done for a patient. So we have dwelled on prostatectomy and the management of cancer prostate. How to take history, how to examine, how to investigate, and how to treat. Any questions? Please work hard. You are at a time when you need to study, 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 acquire education. And be with Chisha. We'll be making a list according to what you think is important we go through together. I hope for prostate, prostatism, history, what findings you are very competent now and you can manage to prepare your patients for prostatectomy. May God direct you to hard work. You need to pray every morning, every evening, so that you are focused on achieving, getting knowledge from APEC. If you get adequate knowledge from APEC, you'll be an excellent worker. You'll be good. The former graduates are already showing that they are doing very well in the field. But the, for me, the formula is easy. You pray about yourself, your family, your future, and you work hard. Reduce sleeping time. Don't be lazing around. No weekend clubs, what a, no, you are wasting time. Every hour is a reading hour. Please focus. The time is short. You have to pass well the exam. Not to my D's, my E's. Ah. It's better B and above. Please work hard. Those who are disciplined, they will succeed. Don't be cheated. We all passed through educational phase. It's important to concentrate on your studies. Cut away things which divert your time to playing around. Concentrate on your studies. You look after God's people well that way. Thank you. I forgot how interesting it is. Huh? I forgot how interesting it is. <laughs> Yeah. That was very nice. I hope we have encouraged them. Yeah?